Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Shauna with World of Washaba, where I talk about all the things going on in our homeschool journey. I wanted to talk to you about how our year has gone. This is our second year of homeschooling. I wanted to kind of go over what we ended up actually using and finishing the year out with and what we kind of set aside. And we, the things that we set aside, it wasn't that they weren't any good. In fact, everything that we set aside, I'm almost 100% sure that we will be going back to. It just turned out that it wasn't right, right now. And that's totally okay. And again, that's one of the great things about homeschooling is that if it doesn't work right now, don't force it, don't push it. Um, maybe it'll work later. So one of the things that we definitely, definitely stuck with was um, our cursive writing. I've shared with you in other videos that we always do cursive first and my little ones are on, it's from half a hundred acre wood. My little ones are doing, it's just like a page a day for my seven year old son. He just finished this book right here. This one is the next level from the one I just showed you. This one is the letter connector. And his cursive, I am so proud. He's my he's my only lefty in, in the house. And I think he's just doing so good. So they have the copy work there and then he just copies it in cursive. And so he just finished this book. And then my daughter is on the next level. So kind of like the third level, she's completed both of those. And now she, um, what we chose was hymns in history. Again, this is the script and scribe program from half a hundred acre wood and she it's it's again just copy work the next thing that we stayed with was our math oh i grabbed the wrong one oops my older twins almost completed math level two we stopped towards the end for a particular reason and uh we didn't finish it but that's okay um my little ones finished or completed the whole um, master books level K book, which for them was fairly simple. And I was okay with that. My older ones. So here's what happened. I, we got almost to the end and I realized there's something going wrong with my daughter. Um, so my older twins, boy and girl, uh, my son is excelling in math. I mean, he is, you show him a half a concept and he runs with it. He understands it. He can do it in any way, shape, or form. He will never forget it. Um, it's ingrained in his brain. He is very math-minded. I am not. My daughter is not. She is just like me. My husband is very math-minded, math-conscious. So when we were doing our math, I was saying, come on, let's go. Let's, you'll get it. You'll, you know, there was something she wasn't getting. And I just kept pushing her. And that was extremely wrong of me because this is one of the reasons why we homeschool, so that this doesn't happen. So you don't just push kids along when they're not ready, but that's what I was doing. We ended up stopping math. I let my son go ahead in teaching textbooks. He went into uh, level four and he just took off on his own. And I went all the way back to level one in the beginning, lesson seven, where I finally found where the problem was with my daughter. She was struggling with place, uh, place value. And I feel like if you don't have a solid foundation of place value, math is just going to be a struggle for you because everything revolves around place value, everything. And so I took her all the way back there and we are starting over from that point so that she can really get that solid foundation. The next thing that we stuck with was our Bible curriculum. This is Building on the Rock by Summit uh, Ministries. I got the kindergarten one because I wanted to start from the beginning, not because I didn't think that they could handle a first grade or a second grade or whatever. But again, I'm really trying not to care about grade or, or levels. It's really where they are. And since this started with um, doing an overview first off of the, um, the biblical truths, and then it goes into an overview of the stories of the Bible. And then when you go, I, I believe when you start in uh, grade one, then you go into the first uh, couple stories of the Bible more in depth. 
and then grade two, you go into the next chunk and the next chunk. So I wanted them to start at the very beginning so that they could get a really nice overview before we go into each one specifically. But I have really been enjoying this. Language arts. I love Logic of English. I love it so much. If I started over from the beginning, if I had a magic wand, I would still use this. This is so fantastic. So my littles finished book A and I wasn't even requiring them to do anything this past year because I'm not officially starting them with anything until this coming school year, but they wanted to so bad and I'm never gonna deny any of them if they want to do uh, any kind of learning. So I said, okay, well, I have the books anyway, so we'll just do it at whatever pace they want. And they finished book A, which book A is, um, it, there's book A, B, C, and D. And you can either spread that out through four grades. So you could do kindergarten, first, second, and third, um, a book a year, or you could do like kindergarten and first and do two books per year or however you want it. Um, this book A is gonna go through the alphabet. So you're learning all the sounds A through Z. And one of the things that I love about this, so many things, it's like all encompassing. You have your language, um, your grammar, your um, spelling, vocabulary, writing, reading, all in one. Now we do separate the writing because we do the writing with um, script inscribed. My older ones finished C. We were actually gonna try to do C and D with them this year, but we slowed down because the lessons get a little bit more intense and I didn't wanna just push through. So we finished C, now we just have D left, and then you go into essentials. And that's it curriculum wise. There are some other things that we kept in our morning basket. We did not do our morning basket, basket consistently, we went back and forth, traded some things in and out. Um, so that was just kind of there if we felt like it. I would like to be more consistent with it because I think it's a really great way to start off our morning. We did a lot of read alouds, which I'm, I'm very pleased about, but we read a bunch and we really enjoy reading aloud and it's just a great way to introduce really good literature to them. But going into next year, I have a lot more that I want to do read aloud wise and incorporating that morning basket back in there can give us that extra um, time for reading. So I'm really looking forward to that. Let's see what else for our first year. We did our poetry tea time. We usually do that around January for a couple months and the kids love that. I think it's because every time we do it, a new, um, a different kid gets to bake with me and they get to pick out what we're gonna bake, whether it's cookies or a cake or, you know, whatever, and they get to make it. And I, I know that they love that. And we do this whole spread with like um, cheese and meats and crackers and um, fruit. And we call it tea time, but none of us drink tea. <laughs> and it's just a great time. And we read our poetry books. They love reading their poetry books, which, you know, I love. And it's really exciting. Sometimes we'll invite friends over, so we'll have guests. And that's really exciting. And we have done just some, you know, outings. And it was really hot this year in Florida. And we never had a freeze. So what that means is that the mosquitoes and the ticks and the bugs and all that stuff don't die. And I was really hoping to get out and do our hikes like we did last year. We did a whole bunch of wonderful hikes in nice, cool weather. And we didn't go this year because the mosquitoes are out of control and it was, it was hot and muggy. So I'm hoping that next year we will get a freeze because I have these packets for them to do their junior ranger program. And they're ready, they're waiting. We were gonna do it this year, but we didn't get around to it which gets me to the part of the things that we just kind of didn't end up using. You saw me unbo unbox Knotgrass History. We unboxed it, I looked at it, it's beautiful. It looks so fun. I love history, it speaks to my history heart. I think it's written beautifully, it's illustrated beautifully. I just don't think my kids were ready for it just yet. We will be using it. Um, this is nothing against the program. It just was not right for us just yet, but I'm hanging on to it because I think it is phenomenal and I'm really excited about it. We also started out the year using My Story by Masterbooks. We stopped that as well. 
and we also started out using Science by Masterbooks and More Than Words by Masterbooks. All of those we stopped a couple months in because I feel like, and I said this earlier, I'm really trying to create a one room schoolhouse approach. And I felt like my little twins were just, they were like right on the cusp of paying attention and not paying attention. And I really enjoy my story. So we're holding off on that until next year, I believe. And then I will probably just be adding that to our morning basket and not so much as a every day we're gonna do one page. Cause I really, really love how my story introduces geography and the continents and the countries. I think that, that it just gives a really great overview and it's simple and it's fun, it's to the point. So we're definitely gonna be doing that. Science, we stopped because we were all getting a little bit bored um, because there was so much of it that we could do outside. So we ended up just going outside and doing things out in nature instead of following the book. There was also a section on the body. I ended up doing a unit study that I created for the body. And then animals was the third section. And we just kind of did our own thing for animals as well. More than words, we stopped because it wasn't as in depth as I wanted it to be. Whereas the um, Bible curriculum that we use, that was where we needed to be. And I felt like I needed to shave some time off of how much we were spending doing school. And that was just one of the things. So I ended up taking out all the papers um, for more than words and I put them in a uh, basket and my daughters go in there and they take out the coloring sheets or the word searches or they just do the journal pages on their own. So that's something that they can do absolutely on their own whenever they wanna do it. What else did we start off with? Spanish. We had intended to do Spanish and we ended up stopping that because I'm having an internal fight. Spanish, Latin, Spanish, Latin. <laughs> and I feel like Latin is winning only because in my personal opinion, Latin is so good for the root of words and to really understand the English language and where the words come from. And I think um, just from what I've read, it can really help you in learning languages later. I felt like there needed to be more commitment in doing Spanish. Not that we wouldn't commit to learning Latin, but it doesn't need that huge culture commitment either because I feel with a language, you need to know the culture. Um, and so we just weren't ready for that commitment yet. So I'm still kind of like deciding that and seeing what's gonna go on with that. But anyway, that was our year. I think we had great, we're growing with each other. We're learning more about each other. Oh, here's another thing. Games, 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 games. We incorporated a ton of games this year and it was amazing. If anything, I wish we would have done more games. I wish we would have just dropped the stuff that we didn't want sooner and replaced it with games. The games that we are playing, I have seen it's hard to say that you can see critical thinking and logic skills, but if you play games and if you know what I'm talking about, then this makes sense. I have seen their uh, strategy skills grow and logic of if I do this, then then this will happen. And, and just by playing these games. Now, I'm not a fan of like Candyland or the cherry game or life or anything like those kind of the classic games. I don't really like the classic games. We play a lot of games by game, right? So sleeping Queens, trash pandas, wig out, rat attack cat, moose in the house, Dragonwood, dragon realm, um, pandemic, all of these games and cooperative games have been amazing to us because we can play the games with them. There's not a loser unless we lose together. You were, it's us against the game. Not that I mind my children losing because they definitely lose a lot. And that is also another great life skill. You have to learn how to lose well. And we have definitely been working on that. And some of my kids are much better than the other ones. Every now and then it's nice to take a break and say, hey, in this game, we're on the same team. And that is just such a blessing to be able to play these games with them. And not only that, but we're building memories and we're having just family fun time. 
And that has been absolutely phenomenal. Also a game that is really good is um, Money Banks. So they were really struggling with money, like um, the value and counting it. So I got this game called Money Banks and we played it a couple times. Actually, we played it a million times and then they got money, like just through the game. So we didn't have to do that portion of the work because they completely understood it by playing this game. It's just amazing. So I should do another video on all the games that we love to play and see if that would be helpful for you. But I think we had a great year. I'm excited for next year. Hopefully soon my video will be coming out about the curriculum and, and things that we're gonna be doing and planning for next year. Until then, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the little bell. It tells you when I make a new video. And I will talk to you next time. Bye.